Hey, we're going to learn Xcode 16 keyboard shortcuts for navigation. My name is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps, and I'm going to take you on a tour of 30 keyboard shortcuts in Xcode. All right, so let's get started. Panels are what make up Xcode. And in Xcode, we've got the navigator, the editor, the inspector, and the debug area. So we're going to learn the keyboard shortcuts that allow us to navigate these areas quickly and efficiently. Before I get into all of these keyboard shorts, I'm going to summarize my top five at the very end of the video. So make sure you stick around to hear which ones are the most important for you to remember so that you can be more efficient in Xcode. All right, first up, we've got panels. The navigator panel, super easy to remember, is just going to be command zero. If we click on Xcode, command zero will hide and show that navigator panel. After that, we've got the inspector. The inspector is building off of that keyboard shortcut. It's going to be command option zero or option command zero, whichever way you want to say that one. That is going to be the right panel. After that, we've got the debug console. This is going to be shift command Y. So shift command Y will hide and show that debug console down below. And these are essential keyboard shortcuts if you're working on a small screen. So if you're on your laptop screen, knowing these three shortcuts is going to allow you to hide and show content quickly so that you can focus on large chunks of code. After that, let's dive into the navigators. The navigators keyboard shortcuts are really easy to remember because it's just going to be command one through nine for these different tabs along the top. So you've got the file navigator, which is command one. You've got the source control navigator, which is commands two. You've got the bookmarks navigator, which is command three. You've got the find navigator, which is command four. The issue navigator is command five. The test navigator is command six. The debug navigator is command seven. The breakpoints navigator is command eight. And then the last one is the report. That's going to be command nine. All right. So that is the navigators one through nine is going to take you through all of those. Really easy to remember. Number one and number two are probably going to be your most frequently used. And if you get into bookmarks, maybe three. After that, let's talk about the editor. There's a few different ways to work with the text editor. When we're working on a different file, um, sometimes we have uh, extra content on the screen and we really want to get rid of it. So to show the editor only, if you're selected on the editor, you can do command enter. That will hide anything that is on screen. Now let's say you're working with Swift UI. You want to see the canvas. That's going to be option command enter. And that is going to show the canvas again. The assistant editor is mostly useful if you're working in C++ or Objective-C code where you want to see header files. If we select some kind of code file here and we do this one, Control, Option, Command, Enter, you're going to see related files or counterparts. These are all the different things that you can see here. And it's going to default to showing a Swift interface so you can sort of see what this is going to look like when it's exposed maybe to Objective-C or to another code file. This is also useful if you're working with storyboards or XIB files. You can get the code and the UI on the screen at the same time. It's less important for Swift UI because we have the canvas. Up next, we've got focus. So if I have multiple files open and I want to focus on just one of them at a time, I can do that here. So I've got the full screen notification here, the slide deck here, and down in the bottom, let's open up the headline section. So I've got three different files. If I want to focus on this left one, and cut through the noise, I can just do Control, Shift, Command, Enter, and it will just focus on this file. If I do it one more time, it will go back to my original layout. If I then want to focus on headline section, I can do that same thing, Control, Shift, Command, Enter, and we'll focus just on the headline section. So that's a super useful keyboard shortcut. All right, so you learned about keyboard shortcuts in the editor. I'm going to have another video that's going to kind of cover actual text editing keyboard shortcuts, but just for moving around the windows, these are going to help you focus on the content so that you can see your code and work with it quickly. Up next, we've got the inspectors. That's going to be our right side panel. 
All right, so next up, we've got the file inspector. And this one is gonna be one of these tabs along the top of the inspector window. And uh, the, these are really easy to remember. There's up to five of them, um, but it depends on the content you, you've got selected. So if I'm just in a Swift file, you're only gonna see three of these tabs. And then if I actually open up the canvas with option command enter, we're gonna see all five of them. Okay, so these allow us to sort of go between these different tabs and it's just gonna be uh, one through five. So the history is gonna be option command two. And then quick help is gonna be option command three. If you're highlighted on some kind of Swift UI thing, this is super useful for getting on-screen documentation without doing any kind of searching. And then we've got accessibility and the uh, other inspector. So if I do option command five for accessibility, typically if we're in the selection mode, you'll see something in here and some additional content um, that allows you to drill into the accessibility elements. And then with option command four, this is probably the most useful of the inspector. It's currently the fifth one. So it's always the last one, I think. And this is going to give you options for modifying or uh, enhancing something. Typically, you'd use this with UI kits and storyboard type stuff, but there is some ability to customize Swift UI this way as well. So that is the inspector panel. It's useful. I don't use these keyboard shortcuts as much because I'm barely in that panel. I definitely use the Navigator one a lot more. Okay, so those are the inspectors. You can see it's really easy to remember those keyboard shortcuts. Once you know one of them, you know all of them. And the most important one is probably the, the last one here, which is gonna be option command four. Okay, so for windows, there are a few different windows in Xcode. You can get to them up top here. And the first one I'm gonna show is the documentation window. This one's pretty useful. It's gonna be shift command zero. You do that, it opens up the documentation with the text cursor in there to search. So you could search something like image, and then it would give you the Swift UI image documentation. After that, we've got the welcome to Xcode. That's gonna be option shift one. You do that, this is the screen that you see on start where you can start a new project. The next one after that is going to be devices and simulators. Now I can't run this because it will stop my presentation since it's a keyboard shortcut I use for screen flow, but this is this menu here and you can see all of your devices that are connected. You can control how they connect, if they connect wirelessly and stuff like that. After that, we've got the organizer. This one's a bit of a claw maneuver. So it's gonna be option shift command and then O for organizer. This will bring up your archives that you can submit to the app store as well as crash logs and feedback from your beta testers. And those are the windows of Xcode that are helpful to use. And with that, let's go into the next section, Windows Management. Now this is a section I added because I think it's really helpful for beginner developers um, to be more proficient on Mac. And if you don't know these, you're gonna learn something today. All right, so the first up is settings, command, comma is gonna get you to Xcode settings. If you're gonna be making any kind of text editing changes, if you wanna do key bindings, this is a quick way to get in there to make those settings changes. After that, we've got the cycle windows. This is technically command back tick, but I always refer to it as tilde for that key. So that is going to allow us to cycle between all of these different windows. You can also hold the shift key and go in the reverse direction. Super useful when you've got multiple Xcode projects open. After that, we can close windows. So if I do command W, 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 command W, we can close all of that. And if I've got multiple panels open, what we can do is we can also close these as well. So this is why I included it. Command W will close out that editor. And then if we wanna get rid of this whole section, command W will give us that space back. Same is true with this one. If I do command W, closes out the current editor, and then we get the space back. Okay, last two, we've got full screen, which is gonna be command opt, sorry, that's gonna be control command F, and that's gonna go into full screen mode. I don't use this a whole lot, but sometimes when I'm on a small screen, I will use it just to focus on the code and get all of the vertical stuff space that I can for my code. And then the last one is command T for a new tab. 
The only reason I use this is if I'm searching. So if I'm on the search tab, I want to search for something and then I want to do a different search on another tab. I will go to the search tab and I will search for something else like grid and find all of the instances where I used the grid thing. Okay, so that is Windows management. Hopefully you learned something there. I like Mac computers because of the cycle Windows keyboard shortcut. Windows doesn't have that and it feels like a big mess. Okay, so what are my top five shortcuts? If you remember anything from this video, what do you need to remember? I would say first it's file. And I do this with command one, just because it gets me back to the file system so that I can get to the project settings or other things as quick as possible. Up next is the canvas. So when I'm working on Swift UI, being able to hide and show that canvas with the option command enter is super useful with Swift UI. After that, I would say it is the navigator hide and close. So just being able to get back that horizontal space and then the inspector hide and close. Sometimes that pops up and I want that space back, especially on a small screen. And then lastly is the debug console, being able to debug code and then get it out of the way so that I could focus on the other code is super helpful. So getting back that vertical space so I can see more code on the screen at a time. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I will see you in the next video where I am going to cover text editing keyboard shortcuts that are going to make you more efficient. So you learned navigation keyboard shortcuts. If you want to learn text editing keyboard shortcuts, stick around for my next video. And if you want a PDF of all these keyboard shortcuts, there's a link down below that you can download a PDF of all of these shortcuts that I presented today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.